All right, this video we're going to track down the source of a transient EMI problem on the circuit board and we're going to use this uh, mixed domain oscilloscope to look at uh, frequency domain and time domain characteristics to, uh, to track this down. I'm also using this little uh, near field probe. This one happens to be by a company called Beehive Electronics, model 100C. A uh, really nice little near field probe that allows you to look at the near field emissions uh, that are going on on a circuit board by just hovering over various areas of the board. You notice if I hover over the switching power supply over here, I can see some of the harmonic uh, generation from uh, the switching power supply there. But the transient signal I'm interested in is occurring uh, just on the north side of this uh, FPGA. And if I lay the probe right in here just right, okay, you can see this uh, signal right here uh, at uh, you know, about 137 megahertz. That's popping up every once in a while about uh, 10 or 15 dB. Okay, that could be a really tough thing to track down. You know, it might be one of those things that causes you every once in a while to fail an EMI test. But uh, what we can do is, since we're really tightly, tightly coupled to it, the likelihood is that we'll be able to use the uh, RF power trigger on the spectrum analyzer to trigger when that occurs so we can start to isolate that. So what I'll do is I'll go to the spectrum mode and change the uh, spectrum from free run to triggered and change the threshold and start moving it down until I start seeing that spectrum occurring. So now if I take a look at it, now I'm triggering actually when that signal is occurring. I can actually see it occurring pretty regularly here at about that minus 40 dBm level as opposed to when we were running kind of free run here we saw it kind of bouncing back and forth. So now I'm triggering specifically on that event. Okay. What we can then also do is add um, an RF amplitude versus time trace. Uh, that's one of the beauties of the mixed domain scope is we can add amplitude, frequency, and phase variation over time. So if I turn the amplitude versus time trace on here, so now this trace right here is time domain is showing me RF power versus time. And I can see distinct you know, little impulses or blips here that are occurring. If I do a single capture here real quick, we can go take a look to see is this blip indeed this signal here at 137 megahertz. Where, the spec where we're looking at the spectrum right here, it's at minus 40, minus 40 or so dBm. If I move the spectrum to in between these two blips, say over into this area, I can just pan that over. Okay, Now that signal is about minus 52 dBm. So it dropped about 12 dB between here and here. Let's, look, let's move the spectrum over to this location where the previous blip was to what I triggered on. Okay, And if we take a look at that, there's my signal back there at minus 40, minus 41 dBm again. So we can actually see that uh, this thing is repetitive. And uh, if we look over at this one over here, same thing. We'll see the, the signal's there about minus 40, in fact, minus 39.9 dBm right there. So I know I'm triggering on that event. I can see it's got a regular pattern to it. Now the nice thing is now that I can see that, let's go back and free run the, or go run this again. So I can see this thing's occurring at a regular rate. So now what we need to do is to take a look on the board to see if we can find a signal that's coincident to that event and that'll give us the keys that we need to go understand what the mechanism might be that's behind this uh, bursted RF transmission. So I'll add uh, channel 1 and uh, just take my probe here and you know it's very easy for me to go around and probe various areas on this board. If I probe this header over here okay I can see you know a signal there that is kind of somewhat random and uh, not at all coincident to that particular event. Uh, if I look at uh, you know that signal there I can see that one. If I look at this one here Again, it's kind of a random signal. It's not coincident to that event. Okay, but if I look at this signal over here, this one quite clearly is very coincident and uh, you know, synchronous to that particular event. Let's just do a single sh uh, shot capture on that. And it's very easy to see that this little bursted signal is occurring right at the same time I'm getting this RF, RF signal here. You may notice that I was probing over here, and the RF signal I'm looking at is way over here. And this kind of points out the fact that uh, sometimes the signals that may be coincident to these events might be as a consequence to something else that's going on. For example, this FPGA could be doing something in its code to generate that signal, but it's, it's that, you know, the work that it's doing in the FPGA that's causing an emission that, that could be at a signal that's completely unrelated to the frequency that we see, you know, at, at the probe test point. But at least understanding what the uh, circuit was up to and what uh, signals were being generated or what the, where it was in its state machine or whatever it might be may give you the key to understanding the source of these emissions so they might be able to retime things a little bit better to maybe reduce some of those things. So I hope this was helpful and uh, kind of a shows a neat use of uh, a mixed domain oscilloscope to track down a transient EMI problem.